About to go to the Sao George cinema to watch The Godfather for the first time in about 10 years. I didn't really know what to think of it the first time I saw it, so I just sort of didn't bother watching it again. But now I think 50th anniversary, it's a good time to give it a go and on the big screen. Let's go. So, I've had some time to sit with my thoughts and I feel like I was too young to really appreciate this as a film. I guess I wasn't really able to appreciate a story that really kind of takes its time and I'm glad that I finally managed to watch it again because it's magnificent. The acting from Brando is clearly great but Pacino is fabulous in it. The way that he's able to express so much with so little, the way that his character morphs into the Don throughout the film. I thought it was handled beautifully. I mean the, the, the screenplay is exquisite but it's also a lot funnier than I remember it being. There's a lot of really funny moments and the, the audience were really laughing like fairly consistently at various different jokes in it and I didn't remember it being a particularly humorous watch but <clears throat> there are some really humorous moments kind of littered throughout that really help elevate it a little bit and stop it from being this rather worthy and not necessarily depressing but rather sombre tone. I mean I just I love the the interplay between the different mob bosses and the whole scene the restaurant toilet with a gun just how that is put together is just god genius. The cinematography is astonishing. The way that shots are composed and, and framed and the use of light and shadow are, are masterful. Just, I mean, the opening scene with Bonacera or something like that and you see the different perspectives. It looks fucking brilliant. It's just such a wonderfully crafted film. And everyone across the board is, is really, really great in it. The score from Nina Rota, one of the most iconic music scores of all time, and it still sounds so eerie, and there's just something quite mysterious and nostalgic about it. And that last shot as well, where you see that he has essentially become his father, the one thing that he didn't want to become at the, at the beginning, and then he lies to Kay about killing Carlos. Yeah, I mean, this is just a absolute masterpiece. I mean, it's pretty much perfect. And I'm really glad that I, guess I got to see it on the big screen for its 50th anniversary. And what better place to do it than purportedly one of the best cinemas in the world, which I've been wanting to go to for a while. And now I finally popped my Sao George cherry. I'm pretty content with that. And I hope that I see more films there. And to top it all off, the tickets were free. What a night. I'm on my way to the Omniplex Rathmine Cinema in Dublin to finally see... I, well, I don't know if I've seen Godfather Part 2 before, but certainly it's my first time watching it on the big screen. So I'm very much looking forward to it. I'll give my opinion when I walk out of the doors. So, I just got out of the cinema. I'm not sure exactly what I expected, but I don't know if I expected the story to be about what it was about. I knew all of the Vito Corleone backstory was in it, and I knew that there was something to do with Cuba. I don't think I've seen this, uh, having watched it, because I think I would have remembered, but there's just so much going on in this that would have went over my head when I was like 18 or something anyway. It's just exceptional. The writing, everything about the structure of it is is excellent and the way that it kind of ties everything up towards the end with that dinner conversation. It's just excellent and Bobby De Niro and Al Pacino were just excellent. I think I need to really see it again to get everything. You know, my one, I suppose, it's not really a gripe, but my one question about it really would be, there's a scene when the senator is in the brothel, I, I guess it's a brothel, the woman is on the bed covered in blood. I don't know if they set him up and she's pretending to be dead because she started breathing. <laughs> and I would have thought that someone like Francis Ford Coppola would be like, oh wait, she's breathing. Let's do a take where she's not breathing. I need to look that up. Maybe that's like a big goof, like the stormtrooper hitting their head against the door. But yeah, 
front to back, this was exceptional. Just the, the way it looked, the cinematography, the lighting. As I said, like in the, in the previous review, like the use of light and shadows was just, oh, it was just mesmerizing to watch. And the music is, I don't, I, I didn't check to see if Nina Rota wrote the music for this one as well. But far apart from that, the fact that Francis Ford basically cobbled this together because the studio basically forced him to do a, a sequel. As far as these kind of like, oh, well, I've got to pump this out type of uh, movies go, this is right up there at the top. And he made the conversation in the same fucking year, which is a great film. Honestly, no words. I mean, I sound ill-informed, like, talking about it, but there's, there's really not much to say that's already been said, probably. And when you're looking at a film like this, it's really difficult to really point out individual elements when it all uniformly works so magnificently. I'm really glad that I got to see it in cinema. I don't know if I watched the third one. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Sam Bain who was saying that the third one was the most kind of miserable experience they've ever had watching a film. Or the most disappoint. I can't remember the exact words, but they didn't like it. I'll see. Maybe I'll do it at some point. Who knows? But for now, good job, Francis Ford. Well done. <laughs> Fuck it out. So that's all for me. I'll see you all soon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can also follow me on Letterboxd. Ciao.